Hey everyone, Bradley Jack Design here with another design tutorial, this time displacement maps. Now displacement maps are used to change the geometry of a layer to match the contour of the selected Photoshop file. They would allow you to make something look like it's on fabric, wood, brick, or other textures. I mainly use displacement maps for lighting effects or glass or ice in my designs and to distort the players or text beneath them. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to use a displacement map to give your design a shattered glass effect, a cracked ice effect, and then distorting your design based on the overlaid lighting or text distorting based on lighting. First, let's take a look at some shattered glass effects. So here I have an image of Shaq. So let's say we want it to look like he broke the backboard here and we want some glass shards coming out and distorting the photo below it. So what we're gonna do first is I've got some glass shards here. So I'm gonna just toss all of these on top of the design. These are shards I found just online from some random stock images. You can just Google glass shards or you know broken glass and find some cool broken glass imagery online. So first off, I'm gonna make all of these a lot smaller. And what we're going to end up doing in the end is having these set to either screen or color dodge. So I'm just gonna set them to screen now. And I'm gonna just move them around different parts of this composition. I'm gonna make some small, some big. You can blur some if you want, if you wanna add a little more depth. I'm just gonna, you know, just move these around however I wish I would want them. Basically, put glass where you want it to get distorted. So let's say we want his foot to be distorted here. Um, I'm gonna put one, you know, we'll put one right there. And this last one we'll put, you know, we'll keep it right here in the middle just so we can see what this looks like. So I'll drag it like that. So, you know, we've got this glass in the foreground. This isn't the best composition, but you know, you can play around with it. This is just to show you what you can and can't do with the displacement maps. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to create a new layer underneath it and I'm just going to fill that in with black. So this is the displacement map file that we're going to save. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to a smart object and I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to save this as glass, dis glass, I can't type, displace. We wanna save it as a Photoshop file and we're just gonna save it, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop for now. So I'm gonna save it there, yada yada. One thing to keep in mind, which I have to get out of full screen mode to show you is it has to be, um, the image mode has to be eight bits. It can't be 16 or 32. If you try to use anything else, it'll give you an error. So make sure that it's eight bits. So we have our glass displace. I'm gonna hop back here. Um, I'm going to, I'm gonna get rid of this for now. Actually, no, we'll leave this here. We're gonna set it, set it to screen. We're going to select the layer we want to distort. So we're going to distort this layer based on the glass file we just made. So with the shack layer selected, I'm gonna go up to filter, distort, displace. Now we're gonna leave everything here the same and we can tweak it later, later and I'll show you what it does. So 10 and 10 is fine. Here's the glass displace. We're going to open it and you can see it displaced anything underneath that glass. So basically, I believe how it works is, you know, whatever's black, it moves one way. If it's white, it moves it the other way or it doesn't move at all. So you can see here, it looks like this glass is in front of his foot, his foot here. You can see the distortion here and up here. So what we can do now is we can play around with the glass on top. So, you know, I might set it to color dodge. I might duplicate the layer and set it to screen. Maybe play with the opacity a little bit to get what the to get the uh, effect we want. Now you can also, since this is coming out, you know, let's duplicate this layer. Uh, I'll go up to filter, blur. I'll do radial blur, and then I'll do a zoom, and we'll set it up to something more, and then have it coming from roughly where the hoop is and then it'll make that layer look like it's coming away from the hoop. 
Now this might be too much 34, so you know, let me do like 15. So it just blurs the glass a little bit to give it a little bit of motion. Um, one thing you can do too to get a little better detail in the motion is add some noise to it. So I'm gonna add some monochromatic noise to this glass layer. And it's basically just gonna give it a little bit more of some lines instead. Oh God, see how bad that looks? All right, hold on, let me put this down to like this. Drag the, uh, drag the effect you want it to do first on the bottom. So I'm gonna drag radial blur up. So it's going to add noise first and then blur it. So now you can see these lines. Now it looks terrible. So I'm gonna hit adjustments. Let's add a levels layer to it to get rid of some of the levels. Oh, I also need to notice set to screen. So yeah, so levels layers to get rid of some of that. And you can see these lines now are a little, showing a little bit more motion than before. You can also go in and, you know, add color to these if you want. So, you know, let me, let's duplicate this whole layer we have with the lines. Let's make a new layer. Let's just sample some of this yellow, mask it to the layer, and then set this whole layer to, let's do color or hue, color. So color, you know, we just color the glass a little bit yellow, just add a little bit more of the, the colors from the Lakers in there. This is how we would distort, distort something with glass. It's all gonna be dependent on your displacement file. Um, so let's go in here and actually let's edit this displace. Let's make it like 50 and 50 to see how extreme this looks. You're gonna have to reselect the displacement each time. So we're gonna hit open. So you can see this is way more extreme. So you can see how much it's affecting it. And you can actually see how it's coming off and bleeding off of where the actual displacement is, which is a problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, let's see what happens if I delete the smart filter. Let's go back up, distort, displace, let's do 25 and 25. I normally don't go more than 25 because it looks weird. So this looks pretty good. Um, you know, you can see up here, it's it's a little a little troublesome, but that's why 10 and 10 works pretty well. But you can see this is how you can get something to be distorted. Now, I generally don't turn these into smart objects right away because if we want to edit it, you know, maybe we go in here, we want to move this shard up a bit, but I can't really see what it's on with in this. Or I can't really see where it is on here, so I'll leave these all live, move them around, save that out as an additional smart object is what I should have done, and then I can play around with it. So that's how I would make something look like it's glass shattering. So that's what I did for my nickname graphics. That's what I did for my original shack graphic. Um, I use it every so often for glass effects like this. So if you want to use the displacement map to get a shattered glass effect where the glass is affecting what's behind it, this is how you do it. You just have your set layer. You move around the objects in the composition where you want them. Save those out as a smart object. You have to make sure the displacement map is black and white or it's not going to work. That's why I have these black and white. Um, it's glass, so it's already black and white. But if you had a colored glass, you can make it black and white. So what we're going to do then, um, so sorry. So we've got our layer. You just select the displacement map smart object you saved here, and it'll distort it for you based on that smart object. Now what we can do actually is we can move these up a little bit and you can try and line it up a little bit better. Um, that looks better here. Sort of here, still a little funky up here. It takes some time to, you know, sometimes you have to readjust where the displacement is based on what you're doing, but that's how you can do it with glass. What I'm gonna show you next is uh, how to display something with ice. So it's pretty much the same idea, except we're using a photo of ice. So here's, you know, just a quick composition of Sergei Barbovsky when he played for the Columbus Blue Jackets, Rip the Blue Jackets. So what I have here is this ice image. So I'm gonna just drag this image of ice on top. You can see this is colored. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to screen. So this is what we're looking at. I'm going to add an adjustment layer on top of it to make it black and white. So here's black and white. And then I'm gonna move the middle part over and the black over and then the white over to add more contrast to it. So let me make this actually normal so we can see what we're looking at. This actually is pretty good, but let's see if I can make it 
a little more black and white. So you want to make sure there's detail so you can actually see the ice. So there's detail in the ice so it's not just like random lines. Let me pull this back out. So that looks pretty good. So this is what we want to use. So let me screen this. This looks good because it'll distort here. You know, if there was other objects in it, actually, let me move it over here so we can get some more distorting so there's more white in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to convert this to a smart object. Actually, this is what I do. I'll duplicate it and then I'll convert it to a smart object. So I still have these files that I can edit. I'll just turn these off for now. So we can double click this. And actually what I like doing instead is I'll just save this file out as a displacement map. So ice displace. So we'll save that here. And then I'll save a, once this is done saving, I'll save again and make sure I save back that file. So we're basically duplicating the file. The reason I do this is because we want it to be in this square still um, instead of using it here. Now this probably would work fine if I save this out as ice displace to ice displace to make sure that it's a Photoshop file. I'll throw this on the desktop and we'll see if there's any difference in this. I could be wrong. So I'm going to set this to screen. We only want to edit Bob here. So I'm going to go up to filter, distort, displace. Let's do 2525 still. I'm going to select our first displace, um, which is in here somewhere. Ice displace. Cool. So we're going to open that. So you can see it distorted him. It actually moves the whole photo too. So if I turn this off and turn it on, it moves the whole image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the smart filter and I'm going to move the image I'm using up and down, you know, 25 pixels. So that's 25. So we move that there. So now when I do filter, distort, displace 25, 25 and go back and select the ice displace file that we want to use, it'll move him towards the middle of where he is. So now you can see the distortion here with the ice. You can really see it here through the middle of where that crack is. And this is using the first one we did with the, the square. So let's, we see what that looks like now. I'm going to delete the smart filter and we'll go back up, distort, displace, and we're going to use the second one we did that's not in a square to see if it does anything different. So that's actually, it is different. You can see here, the line is going here instead of there. If I turn this off, you can see it's getting distorted this way. So that's why I like to use a displacement map the exact same size of the composition because it'll give us the true displacement. So I can just double click the displacement, find that ice displace file we had right here, open it. And you can see it's displacing correctly now. So that's how you can displace ice. Now with the ice, you can get rid of the black and white layer and keep this initial layer that has some blue on it. If you want to keep some of the blue, you know, let's duplicate this file. We'll set it to um, color dodge. The reason you s I set it to color dodge is because it still retains a lot of this actual color. So I'll set this to maybe 50% and I'll turn on the screen layer and set that to 50% to make quote unquote hundred percent. You know, you can see it a little transparent here. So maybe we set it to 70, 75 or you know, maybe we just keep it at hundred percent. And you can again, tint these however you want, but this is how I would use an ice file. You know, you can go online and just search for frozen ponds or, or stuff like that. Frozen ice, shattered ice to get good files that you can use to distort hockey graphics. These d distorting with ice is pretty much, I would say mainly good for ice hockey or, you know, figure skating or something like that. The winter Olympics is a good example of that, but that's how I would distort something using the displacement maps with a photo of ice. So it's the same thing we did in the other example. You have your subject you want to distort, which has to be a smart object. So. I have a smart object of the player here. And then I have my ice layers and my um, 
layer that's a displacement map, which is the same. So they all overlay correctly. Now, if you were to change the size of this canvas, you'll have to redo the displacement or else it's gonna mess up. So if I change this you know, width to 10 inches, it's of course gonna break the background, but you can see the displacement changed. So it's coming through here now instead of coming through here. So if I went to displace, go ahead and just redo it. Actually, we want the original one. I displace. See, it actually didn't work. Let me delete the smart filter and do it completely over again. We'll see if this works or if I'm just for some reason incredibly wrong, which is very well possible. Again, this is, you know, play around with these to get a better idea of what things are. So let's open it and do it now. So it's still there. So actually, I mean, since I changed the composition of this, I would change this file anyway to make it full black over here and the ice. So if you change the composition, make sure you just completely redo the displacement map that you want to use or else it's not going to look correct. So that's how I would displace something using some ice. The last thing I want to show you is how I would displace something, um, displace some text or an object or a person with lighting on top of it. And I use this in a lot of stuff. I used it in Baker Mayfield graphic, my Jason Kipnis graphic, um, several other graphics. So let me just group some of this stuff together that we don't need to bother with, whatever background. So we have some text here. So let's say we want to alter this text. So I have here some light glitches. So I have these stock files that look like this. This one looks like this. And the last one looks like this. So depending on what kind of glitch I want it to look like or distorting, I'll use different files. So I have some pre-made. What I'll do is I will throw those files into a composition and I'll mask out certain areas using a really flat brush. And I'll most likely have them at a, at a particular angle. So these are some glitches I just saved out really quick to show you guys this example. So I'm going to set these to screen and I'm going to move them around the composition where I want the text to distort. Now this will work on a player too. So if you want to distort a player, this works just the same. It's just the object can change to whatever you want to distort. I'm just showing you with this specific word of text. So let's say we want these displacements to, to be this, this is the glitches to be here. So um, these are already black and white. So I'm just gonna duplicate them, convert them to a smart object. Actually, no, we're gonna do it the way I like to do it. So we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna make it black and white. We're going to save this out as light glitch. Save it to my desktop. And then I'm going to make sure I resave this out as a different file or else you're gonna resave this out as an ice glitch and it's just gonna be all sorts of broken. So, you know, uh, lighting glitch file. Okay. So we have our displacement map. We turn these glitches back on to where they're supposed to be. I've got the text, we can get rid of that layer. So I'm going to first convert the text to a smart object because it has to be a smart object. Um, I would turn it into a smart object rather than uh, rasterizing the text or turn it to a shape because I can always hop in here and change what the text actually is. So if you spelled something wrong in accident or want to change it, or if you want to set this up as a template to use with multiple um, players, you know, you can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the text, go up to filter, distort, displace. We'll do 25 and 25. And you can play around with these numbers. You know, if we go to where we were, you can do, you know, 50, 10, you can play around and see what does what. You also play around with the tiling or wrapping around. We don't really have anything in the subject wrapping around the edge, so we don't have to worry about that. So here's our light glitch. We'll open that up. See, the displacement map must be eight bits per pixel. So that file we had that I just saved out is bad. So let me just open up this light glitch. 
reading the Photoshop format. And then we can just go up to image mode, eight bits. It'll convert colors, there's nothing on this, so it's not really doing anything. Look, it's the same, save it out, quit. Filter, distort, displace, 2525, and we'll select that light glitch. So you can see it's, it's glitching here. Now this is actually a, a terrible example because this text is white. So <laughs> I'm gonna change this text to, I don't know, light blue. That's the reason you save it as a smart object, so you can tweak it. So now you can see what's being effective. If I turn off the glitches, this is what the text looks like, which looks okay, but it looks cooler with the glitch on top of it. Now what would be even better is, uh, let's group these together, let's duplicate it, let's turn this into a smart object, screen the smart object, and we're going to blur, motion blur, and we're gonna try and match the angle that this motion blur is at. So let me do like 30 pixels. Can't really see anything. 50 pixels. Still don't like it. Let's do 100 pixels. Let me get rid of this and see what we're looking at. So this is what it looks like here. So you know, maybe we'll duplicate that twice. Have the layer on there so you can actually see the blur on it. Maybe we'll make a layer that's the same color as the text and we'll mask it to that layer and set that to color, to colorize the layer a little bit. Um, you can go ahead and use colored images on top of this because then they'll have a little bit more detail. So like in the images I showed you, let's go back here, these images. You know, this has different colors. It's got different luminosities with the colors. So this would have a little bit more these rainbow colors would look a little cooler than just these black and white. Cause you can have the black and white. The black and white just needs to be there for the displacement map. So you can have the rainbow colors on top. That's not a big deal. So let me get rid of this. So we've got this here. I'm gonna duplicate this layer we used. I'm gonna motion blur it. Uh, I'm gonna change this to like 200, 200 pixels to blur it even more just to give a little bit of an effect. You know, maybe we'll change this one to color dodge. You can see the effect it does. I'll normally go in and play around with screening or color dodge or, you know, change different opacities to stuff until I get the desired look that I get. So that's what I did on my Baker Mayfield graphic. Go check out my breakdown on that and you'll see um, exactly what I did in the layers on there. So it's a different video I have on my YouTube channel. So check that one out. So this is how you can distort just the text. Now you can distort the whole background. Basically, sometimes I'll take a design, I'll just save it out as a JPEG, a pretty completed design, and then I'll do all of this displacing on top of it. So that's, you know, you know it, it's about playing around. So, you know, make a couple colored layers to toss on here. What works well actually is creating a gradient map to go on top of it, because you're changing all of the color properties of it. That of course looks really crazy because it's set to color dodge. So let me set that to screen. But since this is a gradient map and I broke Photoshop, so I can't show you the properties, there it is. So we'll move this over. We need the black because it's set to screen. So we'll set this to black. There it goes. And you can you know tweak the gradient map however you want. So it's just adding a little bit more blue to it. If I turn these off, it does nothing. So that's how I would use certain files to create a distortion on text. Um, I have these files here. I'll go ahead and attach these files below and you on this YouTube video. So if you want to play around, I'll attach all of these files, these, this ice file, these glass shards and these light glitches. I'll attach them so you can play around with it yourself. But let's say we want to glitch a player. Um, let me see if I have a player somewhere. I know I do. Um, dot tiff. Let's see what let's see what we've got in here. Here we go. Let's toss DeAndre Hopkins in here. See if we can't distort him. Oh, well this photo isn't clipped, so that's no fun. Let me take a look here real quick. Yeah, it's not clipped, so that's no fun. Um, let's try a different one. Oh, here you go. This is the back photo I use for the natural shadows at the bottom instead of up at the top. 
So let me just get rid of this. Say, look, it's DeAndre Hopkins. Number 99. A 99-ranked player in Madden. So let's hop up here. We'll get rid of everything we used. We'll get rid of this text. We don't need any of this anymore. And actually what we're going to do is I'm going to use the files that I'm going to supply you. So let me show you how I would, how I would use these. So we've got some light glitches. I'm gonna use this one. So this one's a more like digital one because it's sort of pixelated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set a levels layer to it to make it a little darker. And I'm going to mask out using a square brush. You should be able to load brushes, import. Nope, it's not what I want. Oh well, it's in here somewhere. Special effect brushes, blah, 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 blah. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Right click, let's do 100% hardness. And we're going to mask out a lot of this. So let's mask out this, mask this out. Let's mask, whoa, let's get crazy. Mask, mask. I'm gonna mask this all out now because I'm gonna make a couple different of these layers. So this isn't gonna be the full glitch. It's just gonna be one layer in the glitch. Let's mask out a little bit of this and sort of fake the funk. So there's, there's one area of the glitch. So let's duplicate this. Let's invert this. And let's hide this one. And let's get rid of some more stuff. You know, I'm doing this loosely. You know what, let's make it just this area up here in the top. So let's add this and put this here. So we got a glitch there, glitch here. We'll put this here. You know, and I'm doing this super quick. You know, delete a layer mask, see where you want something to glitch. Make sure you have the right things selected. Now let's glitch this here. So we'll just have this bottom glitch here at the bottom. Now you can leave some of this stuff on the outside like that there. Um, I'll get rid of this because we're going to have this lighting overlaid it. So we want lighting to be everywhere, not just on the player himself. So you know, I might just take this one, duplicate it, rotate it around and move it up to, you know, here. There's no rhyme or reason to what you want to do. It's just all playing around. Get it off his face. Now nah, let's keep it on his face. Yeah, let's move it down a little bit. There we go. And let's just make one more layer. Doesn't really matter where these are. So let's put this here. Actually, I want a little bit more. I just want some extra lighting in random spots. Where'd that go? There it is. On the outside. So this is actually giving a better full effect. So there, let's say we want this to be the glitch. So what I'm going to do, so I'm going to group them together. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to make a layer that's black. Now I need these to be black and white. So I'm going to just make a quick gradient map to put over everything and save this out as nuke glitch. So that's our nuke glitch. Let me make sure our mode is eight bits. See, it's not, so fail. So we're going to let this convert and take forever because we've got a bunch of different layers and it thinks the file's huge. Let's go back to make sure so this is still saving. So we're going to use the same method we did before. It's just using a different looking glitch. So we're going to select this file. We're going to choose this displacement file we just made. Um, we're going to play around with the numbers and then hit OK. So I'm going to resave this because now it's going to be 8-bit. While it does that, I'm going to get rid of these layers that we don't need. I actually don't need that duplicated layer. Let's toss these out. All right, so that's done saving. So I'm going to go to Filter, Distort, Displace. So vertical and horizontal. So I'm going to make the vertical 0 and the horizontal 25 because these are all horizontal. None of them are going vertical. So I want to see what that looks like. I'll select Nuka Glitch. And let's turn this off to see what it did. So this is what it does. So that's actually kind of cool. So I'm going to set this from screen to color dodge. And you can see a little better of what it's doing. So 
we'll duplicate that you know we'll set it to screen maybe we'll take some red in here make an adjustment that's a gradient map make sure we've got some black on the gradient map set it to that layer to make it red I can set this to color or hue if I set it to color it's actually just changing the colors of all of the colors we already have in here so it's giving it a little bit more detail you know let's duplicate this one let's uh, we don't need to oh well I, let's convert this to a smart filter and then I can go in and blur it let's do a motion blur like we did except I can have the angle at zero because we're going sideways I can hit OK so you can see it's glitching sideways. You know, we can make another one. Let's set this to color dodge. Let's change the motion blur to 400 pixels. You know, maybe it's 50%. Let's change a couple of other ones to 50%. You want to make sure that you don't have too much lightness. You don't want to have too much white because you won't be able to see the actual glitch. Like we can, you can't really tell that this is glitched. But if we were to tweak some of the adjustments down here, it'll shine through a little better and give you a little bit more of that effect. So let me hit five on this. So this is a little bit better. But that's how you can use these files to create a distortion to distort a player. So if we go in here and, you know, let's group all these together. We hide these and this one. So this is how much it's distorting him. Now, if you went in and changed the displace to something that has two numbers in it, it might be a little bit better. So let's click OK and see what it does now. So it just moves him down a little bit, but you can see a little bit more of the distortion in the file itself. So this is how I use the displacement maps. I use it with lighting effects, with glitches. You can do this with fire. So if you have fire on like a baseball bat, you know, you can save out the fire on the bat black and white with a black background save it out as a displacement map and then use that to displace a bat so it looks a little bit more realistic i think that will help people who like to use fire in some of their stuff you know fire is going to make something look a little distorted based on the heat vapors or whatnot that's on it so it'll look a little bit more realistic if you displaced it slightly um, make sure to download the files that i'm going to give you for this tutorial and play around uh, make sure to go ahead and tag me in whatever you make so I can see the cool stuff you make with these distortions and glitches. Um, other than that, if you have any other tutorials you would like me to do or any suggestions on breakdowns or any questions, go ahead and drop a comment below. Other than that, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.